Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Garrett Clue. When you and I met a couple of months ago, thanks to Steve Rimland, the wonderful Steve Rimland, I remember we had a brief exchange about what it is like when you are an athlete, whether an Olympian, a world champion, national champion, or professional player who transitions from that world to the civilian life. (laughs) <laughs> to being just a, a regular guy or gal who works out for fitness, but not to win whatever the competition. What advice do you have, Garrett, for collegiate athletes, not even those who go on to become professional athletes or Olympians, but those who played as little kids and then through high school and college, and then it's over? What advice do you have to offer them? about how they can make that mental and emotional transition and maybe how they can then sell themselves to future employers and hiring managers based on that experience that they had, their athletic experience? Yeah, it's a really great question. And many athletes struggle when they retire from sport. And I think that part of that is because the highs are so high and the lows are so low. And we've talked about this a little bit. Part of the challenge is chasing after the same feeling that you had when you were, you know, running into the stadium on a Saturday football, college football game or winning, you know, whatever your sport is. And it took me a while to sort of understand that chasing after that feeling is not healthy because the world, you know, 90 whatever percent of the world doesn't exist in that area of excitement and the lows, right? Which is the lows, you know, we, avoid those. But the point is recognizing that it's okay. It's okay to not have the highs be as high. And there's still a very fulfilling life that's in front of you. I sort of felt like I wandered the desert for a while. And, you know, I knew that I was capable of doing something that I thought was remarkable in terms of professionally, but I didn't know how to frame. I didn't, to your, to your point, I think the advice I have for college athletes is that, you know, really understand how to frame the characteristics that made you a good athlete. And it's not just, oh, I'm hardworking and I'm a team. You know, you have to get, you got to have to go a layer deeper and think about what are the things that come naturally to you? What's easy for you that you see that's hard for somebody else and start there and start to unpack that and start to think about what is it about that thing that will allow me to build a foundation that I can start a narrative to a hiring manager and say, look, this has always come really naturally to me. And it took me a while to figure out what that thing was, but it it actually was someone else telling me. Someone else actually said, you know what? You're pretty good at this. You know, it's not that easy. And I said, oh, I thought everyone sort of has the same aptitude for this. And I was sort of blown away by it. What was that thing? So business strategy has just always come very naturally. And I don't know where it came from. I don't know why, but I'd had friends that were close friends when I was rowing and they said like, you know, you should be on the board of directors. You're really good at the way you think about this. And I, and I ended up on the board of directors for us rowing. And 
I ended up as a consultant for startups and it was something that just, for whatever reason, it came naturally. And so I started to build on that. Okay. Here's a thing that comes really naturally. Don't take half court shots when you can make layups, right? I mean, half court shots are great, but the high probability shots of things that come easy to you. And if half court shots, if you're Steph Curry and half court shots come easy, take half court shots. But for most of us, they don't come easy, right? So it's about understanding the things that come easy and framing your characteristics, framing the qualities in a way that makes you unique, not just the typical sort of axioms of, oh, I was an athlete and you know, I'm a hard work and teamwork and you know, those things. Those are all powerful but they're table stakes. You're in the same boat as every other athlete when you say those things. You want to try to do is you want to try to distinguish yourself from the group. What really stood out to me from your story of discovery of rowing and why you decided to go all in there was when you said it did not come easily. It wasn't something. You weren't just like, pardon the expression, a fish to water. You had to work really hard at it. And as somebody who's been a hiring manager, that's the kind of person I'm looking for. I am looking for somebody who knows their strengths, but I'm also looking for somebody who has determination and grit to be able to gut it out because the way that you grow in life is by pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. I couldn't agree more. And I think that's one of the things that I think athletes, not only are they coachable, and this is why I like to work with athletes, they're comfortable being uncomfortable. And that's really important because there's lots of situations where the world changes dramatically and you're in a new spot doing a new thing that you didn't, you weren't prepared for. And knowing that you have the confidence to be able to not just survive, but sort of thrive through that. I think comes through that the comfort of being uncomfortable. Somebody should write that book. Actually, I think that would be, you know, there's a whole science behind that. I love that. In that wonderful mission statement that you wrote in your LinkedIn about section, you talk about being someone who is not risk averse. How important has taking risks been in your professional and personal achievements? I knew the odds of making an Olympic team were infinitesimally small, right? Just it's an impossible thing. It's like saying you want to be an astronaut or president of the United States and putting my entire twenties on hold. That's a pretty big risk, right? The end of 20 years, it came down to a dead even race with another guy. So I was that close to not making it. And so I have always had this sense of if you work hard enough and if you put yourself in the right position and you show up, this is what I say in, in that LinkedIn statement, is that life is a meritocracy. It may not happen when you want it to happen, but over a long enough period of time, the world recognizes work. If I somehow stop believing that, then my whole sort of world crumbles on itself. So I have to, I mean, everything I've done is, is based upon that. So it's a combination of taking risks and then putting in the hard work to 100%. make it happen. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's That's it just the risk taking by itself is a fool's errand, right? You need to understand. I work with entrepreneurs now. And, and the reason that I do is because it's the closest thing to, to saying, I want to be an Olympian is to say, I'm going to start a business knowing the odds. They're just really small that you're going to IPO or get acquired. And I love that there's an irrational dream that I get to help somebody on their journey. It's just like me. And I identify with that, that you understand the risk and you understand the odds and you say, okay, I'm going to somehow beat those odds. And I'm going to create a roadmap so that I'm going to put myself on that path. And then life happens and lots of things happen and some people don't make it and most don't, you know, and that's just the way that it is. But I love that's the spirit of that, which is a a big reason of why I got involved in the startup and venture capital and entrepreneurship. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of T4C. And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at 
time, the number 4, coffee.org, or text me at 202-236-5712. That's 202-236-5712. 